Greetings from the Savage Troll. Welcome to the second in our series of Map Tool Podcasts. Today we're going to discuss starting a server, how to connect to the server as a player, some functions of the chat window, as well as how to roll dice within the chat window. So to start Map Tool, we go to Tales from the Savage Troll and click the launch link. And Map Tool launches via the web launch. The map tool keeps a memory of the last campaigns you've loaded into, into map tool. And so you can go to recent campaigns and load up map tool intro, which is what we used last time. There's our trolls, our dragons, and our three heroes. So to start the server, you go to file and click start server. You enter your username and your role, whether it's a GM or a player, what port number you want the map tool server to listen on, a name for the for your campaign that will appear on rptools.net, the GM password and the player password. Of course normally you'll keep those different <coughs> but for this example we'll keep them the same. And this uh, these are the options I usually select when I start a server. I use strict token management meaning that you can only move a token that you own uh, I restrict players from impersonating anything on the map and I use tool tips for the inline roles. The other one that I'll use typically is players can reveal vision and auto reveal vision on move but since I don't have any vision blocking layer set up on this map yet I'll keep those off for now. The last option is whether when you move diagonally how it counts when you're moving. You either do 1-2-1 one, one, or 1-1-1 one, one, one. Manhattan or no diagonals, allowing no diagonal movement whatsoever. Normally, most folks use one two one. And our server is started. It's put a message in the chat window stating that it started, and it's uh, the map blinked a bit, repositioning it, saying that's also a visual cue that the server has started. Now that the server is started, your players can connect. The way they do that is by launching their own version of Map Tool. And they'll go File, Connect to Server once it, once it launches. So you see a blank screen. This is the player view. You connect to Server. And normally you'll pick the name of the server from this list. But since we're on the same LAN, I'm going to go ahead and cheat and go over here and do this. And you can either double click and launch it or click OK. I'll double click this time. <coughs> and you see that the view that the player has is the same as the view that the GM has exposed the Fog of War on. So in this case, I see lightly shaded everything except for the elf, the hero, the mage, and the two trolls. So that's what the player can see, is what I've exposed. Are you talking to me? Okay, so how do the game master and the players communicate? They can use Skype, they can use Ventrilo, uh, some other chat, voice chat program. Uh, they can use any of the uh, instant messaging programs that are out there, or they can use the built-in chat function in map tool. Now this is the player window, so I'm going to type something. And there it is. Note that the color here is the same as this color here. You can always change the color of your text by modifying it there. If I go to the GM screen, you see the message has appeared there from player 1, which is how I logged in. Okay, the um, if you need to change the style of your text, you can do that. The chat window uses all the normal HTML tags for bold. Open, close the B tag. Italics. Is I. Or you can underline. and it'll all show up. 
You can also add tables to the chat if you want to, and this is done for a lot of the macro creators. They'll use tables to organize their text. So if I put in a simple HTML table, in this case it's a table with heading, heading 2, cell 1, and cell 2 for the contents, it comes up organized. I can change that via HTML to change the background color as well. So in this case I'm going to make the background a gray for the headings and you see that the headings are indeed gray. It also responds to borders and width commands. So in this case if I want to make it 250 wide, put a border of 1 around it, keep the first row's background color as gray, and change the contents to attack roll and uh, put an inline a roll with that table, you can do that too like that. I also adjusted the alignment of attack roll to the right and put the roll in the center. You can also whisper if you don't want everybody seeing what you're typing. You can whisper. And it states that you've whispered to RP Troll that this is a whisper. If I go to the GM screen I can see player one whispers. If I only want the GM to see something You can say it to the GMs that have logged on as a role, and as you can see, player one says to GM, this is a trap. You can also do out of character speech by slash OOC, out of character. And it puts parentheses around it. If you have any questions about the slash commands that you're able to use, you can always do slash help and it's going to list them in an HTML table for you. Okay, next we're going to go into how to roll dice. Let's say to roll you have two options. You can either do slash roll or slash r and put in a dice expression like d20 which then rolls the d20 and displays the results. You can do additional additions and modifiers to the roll by d20 plus 2. It's going to show you that's what's happened. And in this case, we rolled a 1, adds 2, gives the final result of 3. You can run multiple dice at once. Um, let's do a 6 die 6. And it will, do, it will roll 6 die 6 all at once. You can add rolls on the line, so 6 die 6 plus d20 if you choose. And it will display the final result there. Now that's fine for rolling, but what if you only want to roll something for the GM? Well, you can do roll GM, and it's going to be a result that shows only on your screen and the GM screen. If you want to roll and not even let you know what it is, but let the GM know what it is, you can do roll secret. And it says you roll secret to, secretly to the GM. You come over here and it shows the result on the GM screen. Well that's all well and good, but you also sometimes want to include a dice roll in a bit of text. So I attack the troll. You can open the square bracket, do T20 and close square bracket, and it puts the roll in line with the text you just typed. I attack the troll 7. Then if you mouse over, it's going to pop up like it would if you'd done a slash roll command. Likewise, you can put the same sorts of expressions like D6, 2D6 in there, and it will do the same thing. So any of the expressions you used under the roll command you can use here, except then you can string them together. I attack the troll, D20, with a damage of D8, in which case both rolls show up in the text. Once again, you can mouse over to get the results. Now the dice expressions uh, can get fairly complicated and different game systems have different rolling systems. I use Savage Rolls a lot and so the type of dice I roll a great deal are exploding dice or as Savage Rolls calls them, acing dice. To roll something that's an exploding dice, you simply put an E at the end, so D8E. If I roll that enough it'll eventually get larger than 8 showing that it 
get aced. Let's do a little something simpler. Do a d4. There you go. So with a d4, you can see it aced at least twice. It will have aced twice for that roll. You can put those in the inline rolls as well. And it does the same thing. Okay, this concludes our brief screencast on how to start a server, connect to a server, and use the chat window. Until next time, good gaming.